Good morning, Spring Valley Church. Actually, don't know if it's morning when you're watching this. Maybe it's afternoon, maybe it's evening. Hopefully, uh, you are in a good place and life is going as well as possible as we continue to deal with this whole coronavirus. We'll continue to broadcast. Broadcast? Yeah, we'll do our messages here at uh, my office until uh, we are able to get together again and worship in the sanctuary. Today, we are going to launch a new series, a series that I had never even thought of teaching on before, but as we are dealing with this coronavirus, I began to think about appropriate themes, and, and then this idea popped into my head, and it popped into my head because of a lot of different factors that we're going to get into in just a moment, but before before I do that, before I even introduce the theme, I want to open in prayer, so let's go ahead and pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your continued provision in our lives. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the new opportunities that have arisen in our lives recently, actually because of this virus, how we are finding ourselves um, doing things differently and in some ways better and in some ways uh, improving our, our quality of, of uh, family time and, and being able to enjoy different aspects of life that maybe we didn't have time for be before. Uh, Lord, perhaps for some of us, it's just drawing us closer to you and reminding us of our need for you. Lord, we continue to ask for your help during these times as people are definitely being affected by it uh, in very serious ways, whether it be from loss of uh, job and wages or, or uh, the illness itself and taking people's lives and causing great sickness, Lord, um, not to mention just the, the fractions that it's causing in, in the political world and, and just, Lord, the, the, the multitude of different issues ever. We, we pray Lord, for your intervention, we pray for your help. We pray for your guidance in our lives as believers during this time and our role in that. Lord, we pray for this, this particular message. We ask, Lord, that you might bless it, that you would use it, of course, for your glory alone, that you would help us to become more, uh, more Christ-like, uh, deeper followers, closer followers of yours. So, Lord, be with us now as we look at this message. We pray uh, this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, uh, we are gonna we're gonna have a little fun today, and the reason I emphasize the word fun is because that is the theme that we're gonna use for the next couple of weeks. I've never taught on fun. I've tried to be fun in my teaching, but I've never used it as the theme. And there's a lot of just sort of different ways that this came up that I, I'm just really happy to share with you. Kind of looking forward to teaching this this series and this message today. Begin by uh, sharing with you that I have created a new addiction in my life. I have become a steelhead fisherman. And uh, some of you are laughing right now because those of you who know about steelheading know that it's a little more challenging. In fact, for me, it's a lot more challenging than other kinds of fishing. And last year, I attempted to catch my very first steelhead and tried numerous times and did not succeed at all. So it got put on my bucket list of this year to catch my first steelhead. And I took that pretty seriously. Like I really, really wanted to do it because I've watched people reel them in. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos and it just looks like so much fun to, to hook into one of these guys. And I've never done it. I grew up my whole life fishing and last year became more uh, in love with it, uh, kind of renewed my love for fishing. And a lot of it had to do with this whole steelhead world. Well, in the midst of all of this, uh, watching, and especially of watching YouTube videos, I came across this movie that was actually produced by the like rock climbing company, REI, uh, that is called A Steelhead Quest. And it highlights this, this married couple, Terry and Jerry. Terry is a woman. 
as uh, they embark on this special quest. And I'm gonna let them tell you about their special quest. And uh, this all really does tie in to our theme. And this theme of fun, I just wanna put you at rest right now and tell you that it really is a biblical, not only concept, but a, a biblical mandate. So this is important stuff, it really is, and it's uh, permission for us to have fun talking about fun. So I'm gonna do that today. We're gonna have a little fun here in my office as uh, we record this. So take a look at uh, a portion of this video from uh, a Steelhead Quest. So the quest was a little idea I had about loving my home water so much. I thought, you know what? I wonder if all rivers are this beautiful. I thought about going somewhere each month of the year, seeing the different seasons, and seeing if I couldn't find a wild steelhead on a different river each month. And it was just something I carried around in the back of my head and kind of fantasized about. And then it seemed like the time might be right to do it. I didn't want to wait till I got a lot older. And I, uh, it just felt kind of right. So we talked about it a little bit and Jerry said he would be in. I think he was scratching his head a little like, is this something she really is gonna do? It's probably pretty safe to say he was in because he probably wondered if I'd really carry it through. When the plan was presented, you kind of were, I think it's doable, and had some questions because you're kind of more the... Uh, Responsible adult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I am yep. can be the planner of fun. And, and I'm the, the prag pragmatic yeah. guy. Works with the, out okay. Yeah, So wet blanket. <laughs> okay, don't they look like an interesting couple? I mean, hopefully there's something about those two that seems a little bit attractional to you. We're going to watch a, a couple more clips, but what a, what a crazy and wonderful idea to come up with to try to catch a steelhead every month of the year. Now, you maybe weren't trying to pay attention to this, but she said the word fun numerous times in that clip that you just watched. She also said that as uh, they're they, they being interviewed, she said to, to Jerry, uh, I'm kind of like the planner of fun, right? And uh, all of that is important to what we're gonna talk about today. So what I wanna do is turn to scripture and share what that has to say about this topic of fun. Now, I'm going to read from the book of Ecclesiastes. And, uh, you know, Ecclesiastes is written by uh, King Solomon, who is credited with being the wisest man to have ever lived, the wisest man in, in all time. And in the eighth chapter of Ecclesiastes, I'm going to read verse 15, and he has a recommendation for us. It starts with, so I recommend. What do you think Solomon is going to recommend? Because my guess is you don't know this is in the Bible. Uh, my guess is that you are going to hear what I'm about to say, and you're going to be like, huh, I never thought about it. I never knew that was there. All right? Here's what recommendation Solomon has for us today. So, I recommend having fun. Solomon says, I recommend having fun. Do you want to know why he recommends having fun? Because the next word starts with because. The next part of the verse starts with the word because, I should say. So, I recommend having fun because there is nothing better. I want to just pause there and let that sink in. Fun because there is nothing better. 
There is nothing better for people in this world, he says, than to eat and to drink and to enjoy life. That what they will experience is some happiness along with all the hard work God gives them under the sun. God has given us hard work to do. You better have some fun along the way. That's the recommendation of Solomon. Are you a fun person? How bad are the people in the room with you right now wanting to uh, speak out and say, no, he is not, or she is not? Are you marked as a, a fun person? Well, I think there are some principles, uh, some lessons to be learned about fun. And uh, the first one is the word intentionality. Now, Terry makes that comment during the interview where she says, I'm kind of like the planner of fun. Remember that? And uh, he says he's the responsible adult or whatever. Now, it's interesting. As I was preparing for this, I also caught on that she's actually saying the word fun in her just her dialogue it's coming out of her so I I started at the beginning and I began to count she says you know in this rather short movie uh, the word fun or, or funny 18 times and I probably missed a few because I, I get sucked in and I forget to listen for the word um, 18 different times at least she says the that word fun uh, Jerry on the other hand says it I think two or or three times and it just strikes me as truth that you know th this is who she really is and there's there's a video clip we're going to watch in a little bit that that really is the the reason why we're doing any of this is because of this this next clip we're going to watch but before we go there I'm getting ahead of myself back to the scripture back to the, the lesson uh, Solomon says so I recommend having fun now you would expect a a king, uh, the wisest person of the world to say, so I recommend studying really hard and working super hard and, and being serious and, you know, things of this. King Solomon says, so what I'm recommending is go have some fun. I find it intriguing that he has to make that recommendation. People are not always fun. People are not always just naturally doing fun things. But you know, the fact that he says, because there's nothing better for people in this world, nothing better than to eat and drink and enjoy life, because uh, that way they will experience some happiness along the way with all the hard work God gives them. Look, as you said, you know, life is going to be hard. Work is going to be hard. The corona, uh, uh, isolation, the, the you know, this, this time that we're trapped inside this bubble of of life right now it, it's hard but Solomon is saying in the midst of hard stuff to still have fun and the first thing I want to say I've said is that it needs to be intentional it needs to be something that you plan for um, it needs to be something that that you want and don't expect others to do for you. You know, for me, when this, my own personal steelhead quest, trying to get my first steelhead, it's uh, been getting up at six o'clock in the morning and driving an hour north to a river. And most days it's been icy roads, believe it or not. It's been snowy and you put on waders and you go, uh, wade out into a river that's like 39 degrees or something like that. I mean, the ice, you know, hasn't been gone that long, 40 degrees, 42, whatever. I mean, it's just, it's, it's cold, you know, and the wind blows and all that. I know you're feeling sorry for me. Poor guy is going fishing, right? But it'd be really easy to sleep in and it would be really easy to um, not make that drive and to not put on the waders and all that kind of stuff. But I know that there's joy in this journey, 
you know, of this little, this little small story of mine. And um, for you, you know, planning a game night with your kids or, or um, when you go, those of you who are still going to go to work, to take an attitude of fun because the hardest things in life, the, the, the most significant things in life aren't fun by nature. I mean, um, if, if we don't create fun in the midst of them, they don't just automatically happen. You have to be intentional about, we have to be intentional about building fun into our lives. You know, I think a lot of people want more joy in their journey and don't know how to do that. And I believe what scripture is teaching us in, today with, with this theme is you need to be intentional about creating joy in your life, about creating joyous moments. Now, another uh, little story is with everything going on, my mom and dad, you know, they're, by the way, they're kind of like trapped in the nursing home. They've been there for, um, well, since this all started, we can't go in. Uh, they can't come out. My dad's trapped in there and taking care of my mom. And that's actually a blessing, a whole other story that I'll, I'll, you know, obviously go on and on about. But talking about that with, with uh, my family, a story started to emerge. And please don't think bad of us wonder gems, but I'm going to share a truth with you that uh, the reality is, you know, we all die. And um, with what my mom's going through, that's become a, you know, a, a, a bigger reality that to know that that, that day is probably not as far away as, you know, as it is nearer. And um, I'm embarrassed to even say this, but somehow the, the conversation turned to like their stuff. And, and my uh, two oldest, uh, Noah and Ellie, were part of this conversation of just sort of like, you know, what's going to happen with all their stuff or whatever. And, and I don't really know exactly how we got there, but I, I think I asked the question, something like, well, what, what would you hope to get that was grandma's like when she passes away? And, uh, this was, this just blew Tammy and I away. Um, Ellie goes, Oh, I, I get the play T, the play T set. And Noah goes, no, you don't. That's mine. I get that. And I was like, time out. What are you guys talking about? So here's the deal. When my uh, kids would go to my mom's house, my mom and dad's house, and she would babysit them, she had this little plastic tea set. She would play tea with them, and she would get hats out and put hats on, and they would, they would have tea parties, you know. And Noah's really getting thrown under the bus right now because – he loved it too, and he wants he wants the tea set. And it had nothing to do with what they were. It was about the time that they spent together, and that my mom made that intentionally fun. She would, you know, go out of her way to make this, uh, set this table, and get out costumes and all this stuff. And it, it was all about the relational part, the intentionality of it, to 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 make that a, a fun thing. And some of you right now are struggling with this as a message. You're struggling with like. You know, I need to hear some, you know, more doctrinal truth sort of stuff. Friends, this is in the Bible. Solomon is saying, I recommend having fun. And you know what? If you're a person who's struggling with this right now, you're probably a person who needs to learn how to have more fun in your life. Now, the first point is it's, it's intentional. And the second point kind of lends itself to what I just finished saying. The second point is that not only is it intentional, but it's, it's spiritual. And what I mean by that, of course, is that it's in the Bible. It's spiritual in that way. But it's also, it's spiritual in that you, you can't go to Myers and buy some happiness. You, know, you might be able to buy some things that help create happiness, but the truth is, it doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have. Happy people are poor. Happy people are rich. Uh, fun people, people have fun, you know, are happy. They're poor. You can't, you can't buy a, a, a box that will get delivered, you know, from Amazon that is just fun. It's something spiritual. It's something bigger than that. And Proverbs 17.22 is a verse that I think really needs to be heard. And for some of you, this is a great reminder. It's this, a cheerful heart is good medicine, 
but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. A, a cheerful heart is good medicine. You know, I think the way that we've paraphrased this is um, um, like laughter is the best medicine or something like that. I've heard people um, say numerous times, but a broken spirit, it, it takes away a person's strength. It saps a person's strength. Fun isn't carnal. It's not wrong. It's spiritual. Uh, fun is, it's a fuel for your soul. It's it's, it's, it's food for your, your spirit. A cheerful heart is it's good medicine. It's funny that the Bible says this, and now in our modern culture, we actually have medical proof that, that this is actually true. In fact, um, it's been proven. Research shows that um, the benefits of laughter, of having fun, it, it lowers blood pressure. It reduces stress hormones. Uh, it works out our core, your, your, your abs. Uh, it gets your heart pumping. It, it releases endorphins. And it just sort of makes, you know, uh, everything feels like it's just going to be all right. And then this last one, I think is a particularly appropriate. It actually uh, strengthens uh, your uh, or increases rather your immunities. So during a time of crisis, there's no more important time uh, to build your immunity than during what's going on in the world right now, which means there's no greater time to learn how to have fun. So go have some fun, people, all right? That's your lesson today. But we're not quite done. I got just one more thing. And before I get into that, I want to show you one more clip. And this is the clip that inspired this whole series and lesson because when I was um, on my quest for a steelhead, I began watching a bunch of these videos and, and, um, and, and this clip from this video stuck with me. And so this is a clip of Jerry talking about his wife, Terry, and it'll be our last point uh, for our lesson today. So take a look at this clip. She's pretty amazing in that even through some rough times, uh, I'll, I'll be watching her when she doesn't know I'm watching her, and she'll be smiling. And I just go, wow, how can she be smiling? <laughs> I mean, I'm grumpy about something, and she's just, that woman is happy. And, and that, is, that is infectious, and, and it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to have. You know, it's interesting because we work together, we play together, live together, pretty isolated, but it feels like we're on a date when we're fishing, you know? We just kind of get out of our mode and just have fun. Gosh, we never get tired of it, camping, fishing, boating together. Seeing your good friend, fishing partner, love of your life hook fish alongside of you how can you not love that it's it's as fun for me as it is for him vice versa yeah. yeah isn't that cool where you know he's talking about his wife by the way if you read the comments below this video you know, on youtube i mean you just see like People are crushing all over the way this guy loves his wife. And, and um, young men watch, have watched, write comments like, you, you know, you inspire me. Like, I know what I want to be when I grow up. You guys inspire me for the next 50 years of my life. These young people are writing things. It's just, it's, it's really crazy. And that leads to my point is when, when he says, um, you know, I see her sometimes uh, when she doesn't know I'm watching, I, I, I'll, I'll be watching her and she won't know it. Uh, and she's, she's always got a smile on her face. And, and he says, she, she's just a happy person. That's my next point is that, and well, he actually says it. He says it. Uh, he says that that is infectious or attractive. Being a joyful, 
fun person is the kind of person you want to be around. And like I said, the way this started for me was when I heard him say that about her the first time, probably three months ago I watched this, I think, um, I immediately thought it was cool that, that he was talking that way about his wife. I thought that was really cool. But I also felt jealous or envious of her. Not because she got to go on the steelhead quest so much, but because I know I'm not that person. Uh, if people are watching me when I don't know they're looking, they're probably not seeing a smile. Uh, I wanna have a smile. I wanna learn how to enjoy life more. And I think you do too, I think everybody does how beautiful it is that I believe God put that desire in our hearts. And I think that's why these verses are in the Bible. Uh, they're telling it's okay to have fun. In the midst of hardship and trial and the work that God gives you, says Solomon, I recommend having fun because there's nothing better. To make that better, that situation, to make life doable <laughs> sometimes, Figure out how to have fun in the midst of it. Um, go the extra mile. Be intentional. Understand that it's spiritual. It's, it's, it's not something you can buy. It's, it's, it's about learning uh, to have a cheerful heart because it's good medicine. Remember that a broken spirit will steal a person's strength. So, uh, it, you know, it's intentional. It's, it's spiritual. Thirdly, it's infectious or attractional. So think about the ramifications of that, not only in your, your little circle of life of your family and your you know, friends and neighbors. Think about it as a church, to be an attractional, a church that's attracted to people because they, they're fun to be around. They're not a funeral. <laughs> you know, they're... they're they're, they're a group of people that enjoy life. Now, obviously, that only works when we all are, are making an effort in these directions. Some of us, just, you just need to hear the words, lighten up, enjoy the journey, make life fun. Why? Because it's good medicine, it's healthy, but also it's God's command to us. And uh I want to give you one more passage of scripture, and this is um, this is from the book of, of, of Nehemiah. And what has happened is um, they're rebuilding the, the the walls, the city, and they just learned that uh, they failed miserably at obeying God's law, and they're basically in the dumps and they're depressed. And in the midst of that we read this. It, it says, um, Then Ezra said to them, Go, go each of you, <laughs> eat the rich festival food, and drink the sweet drink, and send portions to him for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to the Lord. And don't be worried for the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. Now, this is basically another command that in the midst of, you know, these people are feeling bad about their relationship with God. And God says to them in the midst of that, this is a holy day. This is a day in which you need to go and eat and drink and be merry and enjoy uh, life because it's the the thing that is unchangeable is, is the Lord's center in our lives. He says, uh, the Lord is, the, is, is your strength and your stronghold. Uh, don't be worried. Some of you are worried to death right now about everything that's going on in the world. And, uh, you know, I said bef before, and, you know, before my last break that we're going to watch one, one more clip. I was wrong. There's honestly just... This one last clip that's going to highlight at this point even more uh, this this truth, and uh, we're going to let uh, Terry say it to you here as a kind of parting of of um, 
this topic of, of fun. So take a look at this clip too. There's, there should never be a time in your life when you don't have a fun goal set for yourself. People get work goals or, you know, practical goals, but take time to set those other bars, those other fun goals for yourself. Carry them out, you know, just as a, as a matter of uh, defense against things that aren't always going right in the world. Well, folks, you heard it. You heard it right there that, uh, you know, you have to have your work goals, you have to have your life goals, but um, you should never, there should never be a time in your life in which you don't have some fun goals. So uh, I've had my fun goals of uh, trying to catch a steelhead. And you know what? Last couple weeks, I've hooked into a few of them. And I think we're going to um, I'm going to use a bragging board and show you some pictures just to kind of, you know, show you. But I want to tell you, I've had fun. And uh, I love what she says that um, for the times when things aren't quite going right in the world, you need to have that. And for some of us, you just you need to hear that now more than ever. Uh, figure out how to incorporate fun into your life, into the life of your family, and enjoy it because there's nothing better. Will you join me in prayer? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for hardwiring us in such a way to enjoy life by having fun. Lord, make us that kind of people. Make Spring Valley that kind of people. May we be a light to those around us in the world who, who have lost fun in their lives and lost joy. May we be instruments to, to bring that back into life. May, may you bless us, we pray, to, to, to be able to bring that into our own lives where it's needed. But would you receive all the glory that, uh, that as you've created this wonderful world for us to, to enjoy, that uh, you are the creator and you deserve all the honor and praise and glory as we enjoy it, as we enjoy and have fun. Um, it's all a gift from you, and we just praise you for that. Lord, be with us this week. Lord, we pray for the day when we can meet again uh, together as a body of believers. Um, please keep us safe. Keep, the, keep our, our leaders safe. Keep our, our people on the front line safe, Lord. Be with those in special need. Lord, help us uh, to be grateful for what we have, but to enjoy it, uh, to, to eat, drink, be merry, but also just to have fun in the midst of the hard work and the toil of life that it brings to us. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Let's go fishing.